Five, four, three, two, two one. one. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Wednesday night for us, Thursday morning for you guys. We did not have Bible study, as we have said. But guys, before we go into anything, if you are local and part of the church in Modesto, Saturday is a very, very important day. Um, what better way to start the year off than by serving? Yeah. That is a tithe unto itself, you know, because basically you're tithing your first day to the Lord. You know, uh, you want to let them know just real quick, Summer? Yeah. So, um, you know, in the past we have, um, normally we would go out and um, just go around the community, guys, and just, you know, go and, and give a nice hot soup you know, to the less fortunate and... Um, Not Campbell's soup. No, no. We make a really healthy soup, guys. And um, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be just giving out a really nice, healthy soup um, with some rain ponchos. And I know that Eli's coming alongside with us to um, put together some, um, some bags of uh, toiletries and stuff like that. And um, I did order some rain ponchos and um, some hand warmers as well. Um, and, you know, giving, giving out some little gourmet sandwiches as well um, in, in every bag. Um, and a little dessert and uh, putting some bags together, guys, so we can, you know, give it out to those in the community um, that are actually out in, under freeways and parks and in the street. Um, you know, there's, if you go down around downtown Modesto and around that area, there's like so many in, in these really, you know, hidden areas and everything. Um, and we're going to be doing that on, on Saturday, um, mid afternoon, New Year's day. Yeah. New Year's day guys. Um, but, um, you know, if you're in the area, we would love for you guys just to come out and come help. You know, that would be really, really nice. But, uh, you know, yeah. That's Time. what we're going to do. I'm hoping that um, if for those of you that would like to come help prepare, um, just to help in preparing the bags and helping prepare everything, we're going to start preparing everything around 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and I'm thinking that we can probably start getting everything out to the streets from 1130 to 12. Um, and then after that time, we're going to start, you know, we're going to keep going on from after that until we're pretty much done. Um, but I'll be there really, really early um, preparing the soup like around from 830 in the morning. I'll be there early with a few women, but we will be preparing the bags and everything from about 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you're welcome to show up, um, we would gladly love to have you there. Um, we normally in the past, we have gotten together like gloves and, you know, blankets and all this stuff. But this year, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. Um, but we would love to have your presence there and um, serve together in unity. It would be beautiful to, you know, to have our brothers mm -hmm. and sisters there. Yeah, if you're, um, you know, if you're local, we would love to have you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that's Saturday, January 1st, 2022 at, um, yeah, you already said the time. So yeah. guys, please, we need your help. Seriously, we really need your help. And um, every single person is a huge deal. Yeah. Every extra person we, we can get. And like I said, man, seriously, what better way to start your year? Yeah, absolutely. You know, than to tithe your time, your first day of the year, your first fruits unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So anyways, guys, it is Wednesday. Um, we were at the church earlier. I was not able to go live. I, I said I was going to try, but yeah, we were just busy guys. We we're busy putting um, some things away and kind of putting away some of the Christmas decorations and everything. And Melodia was there helping us. And then um, I, we had two families show up thinking that there was youth today, but I'm kind of glad that they did show up because I ended up having one of the youth help me uh, put some of the youth stuff up, which was yeah. really cool. And then you got to sit down with some of the, the gentlemen, yeah. and I got to sit down with um, some of the women, which yeah. was nice. So I wasn't able to go live, yeah. so I apologize for that. But I did say yesterday I, I would, would try. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, um, we just got home a little while ago, and we're here, and um, want to do a great devotional, you know. And uh, 
Anything else before we dive into it? Um, no, I got really excited to see that um, the books that were sent out are starting to already get sent yeah, out. Yeah, we started which getting really cool. notifications all day after. Yeah. 49 <laughs> books, guys. So our yeah. email would be like, because you know how Amazon works is that um, they don't take the money out until it ships mm -hmm. or, or until it's track the ship or yeah, something like so that. Yeah, so all day I've been getting notifications yeah. like, ding, 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 ding. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh, gosh, they're already starting to go out, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah. I'm excited to, um, um, Eli, He he's going to be having his books at the church on Sunday. Yeah, and so, I, I made space for that. So we're going to, and he's yeah. going to set up a table. He's going to be signing books for whoever wants him to sign them, but... Yeah, I'm really excited about the ministry that he's doing. His book is amazing, guys. Amazing. Yeah. Another thing that I that I'm kind of excited about is that I want to be able to show people. Um, you know, there's things that people don't even know that he actually sells some pretty awesome magnets for yeah. you know for your car for anything. And banners. Yeah, and banners, and you know those are things that he also sells. You know, um, to help his ministry. And I'm excited to announce that, you know, I, I want to be able to show those on Sunday. Um, I have some, I've been putting them on our metal doors at the church, just so that people can visually be able to see them. Because, you know, for a small donation that mm -hmm. people give towards that, he's able to give them these, these magnets. How much are the magnets, do you know? Uh, $10. Oh. Yeah, that's a really, really good price for these big magnets for your cars or for anything metal that you might have. Your and it's, fridge. Yeah, for your fridge, or I even have some on my fridge, which is really, really cool. Um, and they're a good size. They're pretty big, um, proclaiming, you know, the Lord, you know, and they're beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to show them on, I will definitely show them on Sunday. And um, I was telling David for us to be able to put some on our, our website as well. And those, you know, I want to somehow see if we can make those available, yeah. you know. We got to talk to Eli. Yeah, 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 I definitely want to talk to Eli about making them available um, for for you guys as well. But guys, I'm, I'm excited for him because I see things moving along for Evangelist Eli. And, you know, he's just everywhere. And I see God just moving tremendously mm -hmm. in his life. And... Um, we want to be there to support. We want to definitely be there to support him. I texted him earlier and I was like, I said, hey, uh, are you in Antioch? He was, yeah, why? What's going on? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I'm just checking on you, bro. <laughs> I said, guess where we're at? He was the church. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, he, he, he swears up and down we live there. <laughs> yeah, we don't, though. Yeah. But, yeah, we're, you know, especially during, you know, when it comes to October, November, December, and January, we are at the church a lot because there's a lot going on in those months. And then when it comes to, like, around, um, like, Good Friday and Easter and stuff, yeah. we're at the church a lot, guys. Yes, we are. Uh, okay, so... I wanted to not talk about a specific verse, but we are going to hit some verses. But I want to kind of talk about the book of James. Mm -hmm. And as you know, a lot of times I don't like talking about a book unless I give you some summary. Because there's some of you that have no idea what the book of James is about. And that's what this is. It's about giving you the context and understanding of it, you know, because... Uh, a lot of scripture, when you just read it like that without knowing who, what, where, and how, you know, it it takes away something from it. Mm -hmm. So the book of James is in the New Testament, and it's actually Jesus' half-brother. He wrote the book of James, you know, and a lot of people were like, what, he had half-brothers? Yes. Why do I say half? Because obviously Jesus was not from the seed of Joseph. Joseph was stepdad. But James, his mom was Mary. And his father was Joseph. So um, James actually would make fun of Jesus all his life, the, his whole ministry, until Jesus resurrected. Mm -hmm. And James became a believer. Before that, he's like, man, that's, that's just my big brother. You know, um, there's a couple times in scriptures where he kind of would make fun of Jesus. And uh, so anyways. What siblings do, huh? Yeah, yeah. Jesus had to deal with that too, uh, you know, little brother bugging. So, in the book of James, though, a lot of people have said it's a harsh book. Like, man, why does he, 
why does he sound so mean? Why does it, you know, why does he sound so harsh? And again, this is why it's important to the who, what, where, and how. Yeah. You know, what was happening, you know? Um, if, if you wrote a letter to somebody and everything was amazing in your life, it's going to sound different than if you're in a war-torn country and you're getting bombs dropped all over the place. Your letter's going to sound a little different. Yeah. So what happened was, obviously, we know that Peter was kind of leading the church. But when James wrote the book of James, Peter was thrown into prison. Well, guess what? When Peter gets thrown into prison, everybody's like, who is going to lead us now? Well, they look at James, you know, so it's almost like James had to like, a, you know how there's a president or vice president. Something yeah. happens to the president, vice president has to step up. Yeah. So James found himself in a hard situation because Christians were getting arrested. Christians were getting put in prison. Persecution was all over the place. Um, Peter, who, who was basically a pillar in the church, was locked up. And Christians started falling away. Some of them were like, man, this is too hard of a life. Or they're like, man, let's go back to Judaism. Or it just a lot of stuff started happening. So when he wrote this letter, he had to be direct and he had to be straight up. You know, and, and why do I say this is a good letter for, for us to talk about in relevant Bible talk? Because I think that in this time, in this age right now, I see similarities that the time has come where we have to be straight up, you know, because so much is happening in our nation, so much is happening in, in people's health and hospitals and all, you know, you already know everything has been going on. So I think the book of James is very relevant, Yeah. you know, and um, so I wanted to skim through a few scriptures so you get the gist now, now that you know the context of it. And, and get the gist of it, and let's see how these few verses can be relevant to today. You know, I mean, and, and starting the first is, is James chapter 1. Um, like I said, we're going to just, I wish we could read the whole book, because it's actually a, a short, it's only uh, five chapters, but obviously for, for relevant Bible talk, that's too much. But in James chapter 1, starting at verse 5, look at this one. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to you. I'm like, okay, that's nice. It says, but this, it says, but let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and, I'm sorry, is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let, that, for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. That was 5 through 8. Uh, David reads out of the New King James. I'll be reading out of the message. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get this help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Adrift at sea, keeping all your options open. Yeah, so obviously, you know, let's make this relevant in this thing. He's like, man, if you, if you lack wisdom, then ask God. Yeah. Don't put it on Facebook. Don't put it on Instagram, don't put it on YouTube, don't ask your neighbor, your ungodly neighbor, or whatever. If you seek wisdom, if you want some wisdom, some advice, mm -hmm. seek God. Because that's why it says, God is not going to hold it back from you. You know, and I think a lot of times when people get bad wisdom, it's because they really in their heart know what God's going to say, and they don't really want to know what God has to say. So yeah. they go and ask somebody, they, they find yes people. Yeah. They find people that are going to agree with you, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's I like the fact that it's saying it. And then this part where it says, but let but you got to ask it in faith, not doubting. 
Remember we talked about this on a, um, before. This isn't talking about like, because I think in, in a sense we doubt sometimes. Like, okay, I'm going to pray for healing. And you feel like you got healed. Well, and then an hour later, then it comes back. And it's talking about your faith in God. Going back and forth of believing in Him or not. This is also when you have sometimes um, the person who has been walking with, with the Lord for some times, but they go to the baby Christian, you know, to ask, you know. Because you know the answer you're going to yes, get. Yes, and instead of going to the more seasoned, you know, Christian, because they know that they're not going to like the answer they're going to get, so they're going to be like, oh, well, let me let me go talk with my... Um, the, the newer believer because they'll agree with me, you know, they'll agree with me because I don't want to hear the truth because they're not going to like it. Yeah. They're not going to like what they're going to hear. So they rather just go to somebody where they're just going to agree with them. Yeah. Or not know good enough or, or not yeah. know enough or not know what scripture says. Here's the thing, like, I'm hoping that when somebody asks me for advice, I'm hoping you're asking me because I'm not... I'm going to give you what this says, not what David thinks. But unfortunately, a lot of times, like you said, people go to the baby Christian or the non-believer. Yeah. Of course you're not going to get this. All you're going to get is somebody's opinion. Yeah. You know, what does the Word of God say? You know, so that's why it says, you know, let ask in faith without doubting. Don't jump in and out of God. Because that's why it says, if, if that's what you are, you're, you're like a wave of the sea getting tossed left and right all the which way. It says, don't suppose that you'll receive anything from God. Why? Because it says he's a double-minded man, unstable in his ways. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, it's a dangerous game to play when you're bouncing around. It's like, just stand still, man. Stand still and wait for the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think sometimes we get so busy and God's like, what are you doing? Like, stand still. Yeah. yeah. I like that saying. It's not biblical, but it's a cool saying. It says that in a storm, stand still because eventually the storm passes. Yeah. Sometimes people like the storm. They chase, they're storm chasers. Yeah. You know, so that, that's one instance of what James was talking about. Um, here's another good one right here in um, same chapter, chapter one. Look at verse 12. Is yours start at 12? Yes. Wow, look at this one. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Hmm. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires, desires and enticed. Then when des desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. I ended at uh, 16. At 16? Okay. Yeah. I was 12 to 16. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head-on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more life. Don't let anyone under pressure to give in to evil say, God is trying to trip me up. God is impervious to evil and puts evil in no one's way. The temptation to give in to evil comes from us and only us. We have no one to blame but the leering, seducing flare-up of our own lust. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby, sin. Sin grows up to adulthood and becomes a real killer. So my very dear friends, don't get thrown off course. Yeah. So here's another one, man, that James was like, boom, straight. Yeah. Um, blessed is the man who endures. Where are you going? Temptation. No, we're still talking about this. Now oh. we're making it relevant. Oh, okay. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a silly scenario. Imagine we're stuck on an island, babe, mm -hmm. and strawberries are sin, let's say. Thank God it's a made-up scenario because I love strawberries, right? 
<laughs> but let's say we're on an island, but strawberries are a sin, but no strawberries grow on this island. So every Sunday we get together and we get together at church and we preach how we're strong in the Lord because we don't indulge in strawberries every Sunday. We preach it. We evangelize it to each other. We have little signs that say we hate strawberries, you know, or whatever. And, <laughs> you know, but all of a sudden we get rescued from this island. Oh, we go to the land of strawberries. And on the ship, there's strawberries. That's the true test. Yep. Because you can talk about it in your little island all you want. Because sometimes our church is our little island. And we talk about how we don't indulge in this, we don't indulge in that, and whatever, this and that. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Yeah. You know what this, this means? This means that he's not going to take the temptation away. Yeah. If God took the temptation away, there would no re be no reason for this verse to say, blessed are you who endures that temptation. Yeah. So guess what? You're going to climb on board in this ship and there's going to be strawberries galore. Okay, so first thing you do is grab a big old handful of strawberries and shove them in your mouth. You know, and it's like, oh, Lord, I messed up. I messed up. You know, uh, I've been strong for two years on this island. And, and, the two, and it's like the Lord's like, you haven't been strong for two years. You didn't have access to strawberries. You couldn't even last five seconds. But Lord, I've been strong for two years. No, you haven't. It's never been there for you it's to be It's never tempted. been there. Yeah. You know, so it's like blessed is the one who endures temptation. So it's like, I'm not, so in other words, I'm not blessed because I preach against strawberries. I became blessed when I chose not to indulge. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing with, it's like this, man. It's like, you can say all you want, right? It would have been different if the strawberries would have been there all along for <laughs> those two years. If they would have been years. there all along for the two years. You didn't endure nothing on that island. Yeah. You know, so I, I think it's the same thing in life. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing, you know, like there's, man, I'm, I'm going to just go for it, right? I've known people, and I, I guys, I, I want you to understand this. I've had um, bariatric surgery. I know it don't look like it because I'm chunky right now, but I used to be heavier, right? I, over the years, have known so many people, men and women, that, they ain't very attractive and they ain't feeling very attractive. So they're just like, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a man of God. I'm a woman of God. This and that, you know. And But the moment they lose weight, all of a sudden the strawberries are there. And what do they do? Boom. Mm. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. So... You've been serving 10, God, 10 years and you're all chunky and funky, right? For 10 years and all of a sudden you slip up and you're like, but Lord, I have endured temptation for 10 years. Lord, no, you haven't. You didn't even last 12 months the moment you lost weight mm. and you went for it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. All of, you know, and it's like. The moment that weight came off, you change real quick. Yeah. All, all of a sudden, you got switched up. Yep. All of a sudden, your Instagram looks different. All of a sudden, you know, just come on, man. You even act different. Yep. And you're like, but I've been serving God for 20 years. You, and, and, and sometimes I feel like they know they're lying, right? They know they're lying to themselves. Yeah. You know? And, and here's the thing, right, is temptation is, is no... It can hit the old, it can hit the young, it can hit the brown, the white, the black, it can hit everybody, right? Yeah. So, like when I got bariatric surgery, Sharon got bariatric, well, this is a conversation we had yeah. before. This is a conversation we had before, this is a conversation I had with God before, this is a conversation David had with himself. Yeah. 
Because I'm like, you know what? If you know deep in your heart, I, I believe that the majority of people that lost all that weight, they knew in their heart what they were going to do. They knew it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they didn't realize. I, I don't know, but it just, I really had to ask myself. And I'm like, you know what? I love my wife. I just want to be healthy with her. Yeah. I just want to I just want to ride bikes with her and, and be healthy with her and I want to be there for our children and our grandchildren when they grow up. I I, I want to not be exhausted. I want to not be able <sighs> breathing all the time and sweating all the time. I'm like, "Lord, you know what? I'm going to do this because I want a better, healthier life, God. I I don't want this for any other reason. I'm yeah. being truthful to myself." Yeah. Yeah. And and I think we we enjoyed that. I think we enjoyed I think we enjoyed life bigger, thinner and in in every way, you know? And I think it didn't change it didn't change who we were at all. No, well, I mean, did I feel more comfortable in a suit and all? Yeah. yeah, of course I Absolutely. did, you know, but I was I was close to 400 pounds, guys. And so in case somebody's watching and saying, "What are you talking about? You're a big guy." I was a lot, lot bigger. You know yeah. what I mean? And and yeah, I could lose more weight, but you but know, you weren't you weren't where you were at. You yeah, know? you know, and it just guys, blessed is the man who endures Amen. temptation, right? And um, you know, and I like what it says too, where it says, "Let no one who is tempted say, I 'I'm tempted by God,' because God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does He Himself tempt anyone." And he's like, man, James, so James is like, quit saying that the that the Lord tempted you. Quit saying that, you know, oh, I'm like Job and, and Satan was allowed to. No, 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 no. He straight and up quit says. Quit blaming others. Yeah, quit blaming others. He says, God cannot be tempted by evil. He doesn't, he doesn't tempt anyone. And I like this next part. James went straight for it. He says, each one is tempted when you're drawn away by your own desires. Yeah. And enticed. I think that's a big one too, though, is when, you know, a lot of the times we we blame others for your own actions, for your own decisions, and for the decisions that, that for the decisions we make ourselves, you know? And that's the thing, that we can't, we can't blame others for our own walk. Yeah. You know, we can't. It, yeah. it, it, it can't happen, you know? We don't. We don't uh, we don't force people to make decisions in in your own life, you know. I I don't I don't force food down your throat, you know. I don't force the bottle on people. I don't force decisions, you know, to, to for people to make the decisions that they make. I don't force somebody to get into their car and and drive them to a party. I don't force you know I don't force those decisions on people, mm. you know. We have to make the choices. Yeah. We have to make yeah. our own choices. Um, yeah, you know, like, man, so many different points popped in my head. I want to say them all at once. It, it, um, nobody forces you um, on what you look for on Facebook. No. Nobody forces you on your messenger. You did that. According to scripture, it says each one is tempted. Each one, all of us mm -hmm. are tempted. Uh, when we're drawn away by our own desires and enticed. It ain't even Satan's fault. Yeah. It's our own flesh, our own desires. You know, there's times, guys, where I, I, I tell Sharon, I say, you know what? I'm going to eat a salad today and some chicken or, or beef. That's it. Straight protein, straight salad. And then we're like, okay. You know, she's like, yeah, okay. You know, she never says, ah, oh, I wanted to eat pizza. Or, oh. She's like, okay, babe. You know? And, um, and then we got to go to walmart or something or whatever this and that and i i stop at the pastries she doesn't tell me nothing but she doesn't say hey look at those sweets you know what i mean i stopped there i stopped there oh, oh they're on sale i noticed to myself oh they're on sale what am i doing guys when i do that i could have easily ignored it i could have easily kept it moving i could have easily when there's there's things in this world maybe that tempt you you have a choice to stop or keep it moving, yeah. and I, you know. So, and then I end up buying a you know a chocolate bar or something. Why? 
because I was enticed by my own desires. Yeah. I could have just left it. I could just kept it walking. And I vice could've... versa. Vice versa. You know, we make our own decisions and I make my own decisions. I'm not going to sit there and blame it on him or anything of anything. I can just be like, hey, listen, I think we can make better mm -hmm. decisions when we're together um, so that we can encourage one another. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that we got to be honest with each other. And I'll be like, hey, listen, I'm going to make a I'm going to make better decisions when I'm around you so that I can be a better encouragement for you, you know, and he does the same. But the thing is, is that we got to be honest with each other and be like, hey, listen, I want to be a better encouragement to you. So let me make better decisions so that I don't trip you up. And he's going to say the same thing to me. I'm going to make better decisions so I don't trip you up, you know. It, it, if we I, don't want to yeah. cause our brothers and sisters to stumble, then we're going to make better decisions. Yeah. Obviously, we're using examples of food, but really, there's other things that desire. Yeah. There's other temptations out there. You know very well, you know, and, and it's like, you know that that coworker flirts with you. You know it. They're not even in your department, but you make your way over there anyways. Yeah. And then... Two months, three months down the line, five months down the line, all of a sudden you both are walking out of Motel 6 and you don't understand how that happened. Mm. Oh, you understand how it happened yeah. because you didn't even have to go to that department. You didn't even have to answer back that messenger. You didn't have to. Yeah. But your own desires enticed you to. You know, <laughs> James is being straight up. Yeah. You know, you're in it, it could, because it says you're drawn away by your own desires and enticed. Then when that the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. So at first you were enticed by that person. And then you gave way. No, I'm sorry. First you were desired that person. Then that person enticed you. Next thing you know, that turns into something else. That desire is now conceived. Now sin comes. Now it's full grown. And it brings forth death. Mm. You know, so people think like, oh my gosh, they went to a motel. They messed up. And I'm going to say, no, they messed up six months before. Mm. When they answered that message, when they answered that messenger, when they noticed somebody hit like on the last 50 pictures of them, mm. which why do you have 50 selfies of yourself if you have a spouse anyways? But anyways, that's a whole other subject, right? Mm. You know, because actually, no, no, let's talk about it. If if you're my wife, I I try to look nice for you. I I, I put cologne. I, I try to look nice for you. Yes, and you come ask me every day if it smells good. <laughs> you know, but I I'll be honest with you. I have no desire to put a selfie of myself. Because I want your attention. I've put some selfies before. I know that. Now, there's nothing... Not every day. No. I don't think... Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the selfie. Because some days, you just, you're just like... I, I, I understand a woman. She might... Man, it's a good hair day. Or it's good mm, whatever. Yeah. You know? You um, know a modest picture. Yeah, yeah. Um. If I'm wearing a suit, I'm like, oh, man, I look nice. You know what I mean? I, I, that, I think that's normal. But... I think there's a reaches a point where it becomes abnormal if you have a spouse at home. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm so, like, yeah, you better watch the way you say it. So the so. question has to be asked, why is there 200 selfies? Why are you trying to please somebody else rather than the one that's in front of you? Because now you have made it, you have created a door for somebody to come and hit like, 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 like. You guys know what that means, right? Well, I think, yeah. I definitely think that there's, um, there's a root, there's more of a root cause mm -hmm. to why I, I think there's an, ins there could be more of an insecurity mm -hmm. or there is, um, there's a more of a root cause to yeah. why there's so many selfies. Mm -hmm. One, it can be that there's, um, attention, wanting attention from elsewhere or there's an insecurity happening. Yeah. 
I believe, you know, because I really believe that, you know, when a woman feels the need to have to do that so much is that there's a root cause, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think there's a, there's a bigger root cause when yeah. you're having to do that so much. I think that, you know what, I, I finally realized one thing, like for me, and I speak this for myself, ladies, and I, I please in, in any way do not take this um, that I'm speaking for all women, but I'm saying this for myself. It took me a very, very, very long time for me to break um, wearing so much makeup, right? Remember, I used to I used to wear tons of makeup for a long time, um, and there was there was a root cause to that, guys. Um, it it was because I I really. I felt that I needed to cover up so much or there was just something, there was something more because I, I couldn't see, I couldn't see the inner beauty in me because I always felt a, a, a shame or an ugliness because I wasn't able to, to see my own reflection. And that was hard for me because I, you know, and that was the root cause because, um, being able to see the real Sharon in, in, in the reflection in the mirror was something that I never really wanted to truly see because, you know, everything that I had been through in my past, you know, as a, a young woman and, and you know, the, the sexual abuse and everything, I can never see my worth as a woman. And it was hard for me to look in the mirror and to see the value in myself. So I always thought that I needed to um, overcompensate with what I needed to put over my face and what I needed to do just to feel pretty and all. And, and that was, that was hard guys, you know, and I never understood what it was to um, walk out of my door and just to go to a supermarket and not have to put on makeup or anything like that. But I can finally f tell you, um, having a husband who can actually make me feel beautiful and make me feel, you know, I play around when he actually says beautiful and I say what I say, but for me to actually have a husband to make me feel wonderful and not make me feel odd or anything like that, when I actually walk out the door and not have to put anything on and just feel natural sometimes, it feels really nice. Um, I actually feel loved just the way that I am. And I don't have to be that woman who has to, you know, be this glamorous or have to, you know, be something that I'm not. And it feels really, really good. And I'm so thankful for that. You know, I really, really am. Yeah. But I think at the same time, um, if we, you know, you go to church or wherever we go, I like the way you, you dress. Yeah, I like yeah. it. it. You look beautiful to sure, me. I always make it's sure. It's not like, oh, I'm a wife, so I could just just be in sweats all day. Like, yeah, you know and I, mean? I don't. And, and I don't. And I try myself, too, you know. I mean, yeah. if I'm at home, you know, I'm wearing sweats and a house arrest t-shirt, you yeah. know. But, yeah, man. And anyways, you know, another thing I want to say, too, is I'm not saying every selfie's bad, right? Because I've known so many people that they are really, truly, let's say, on... Um, uh, a weight loss journey yeah and the good thing is is that i have done this before where i use a picture of myself as landmarks yeah so i can yeah. look back to absolutely you know and i don't think there's nothing wrong with that i do know sometimes that goes bad though i have a friend that he he was a chunky guy and then he decided to join the gym actually matter of fact somebody told him if i pay your gym Will you go? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I'm going to sign up for a whole year and pay your gym for a year. Don't make a fool of me because I'm not rich. He goes, but I'll do it. So every day, because somebody else was paying it, he felt guilty if he didn't go. And he would do selfies and he would do selfies. But man, the transformation. He loves his wife. He loves his family. You know, And but the transformation. So he would do it. And I remember sometime, one time, a few people hit him up, like, man, you, you, what's all this vanity? What's all this, you know? And he's like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, he, with the person, with the couple people that asked him didn't know, is he says, I take these for my own landmarks, and I take these to show that person 
that they see me. It's important for me that they see me in the gym every day. Yeah. Because I am because I'm not going to disrespect or dishonor that man's investment in me. But see, that's what I you mean. I mean. It's all in the heart mm -hmm. of the person and in 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 what they're doing. I really do believe that because I really do believe that, okay, are, are, is a person being modest in the way they're doing it um, in, in, in their heart in, the, in what they're doing? Because um, yeah, they did a selfie every day. Yeah, exactly. But. So I really believe that, you know, some people have professions in, in what they do, you know, and in, in what what heart are they doing it in, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and that's why, that's why we, I think everybody is... Um, it's a per person base, it's you know a, what I'm a, saying? It's a heart issue. Yes, it's a heart issue. And I really, really, truly, truly believe that. And that's why I, I don't think I will ever just, you know, but I do believe, like I said, um, we got to look at the person's heart and what are their intentions. And only God knows that. Yeah. And, and what are their intentions? Because it's unfortunate because what is the root cause and what are the intentions of the person? Yeah. Um, there's been times where, you know, I've told you, you know, I've, I've seen people that have, you know, I remember when I first started to get to know you and, um, there's people that have, you know, that used to know your music and I would be like, oh, that person's kind of trying to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to get your attention or something. And and you you would see it, too. And I and we'd we'd immediately, you know, just nip that at the bud right away, you know, mm -hmm. and and that's the thing is that, you know, we got to be once again, we have to learn to discern you have to learn to discern woman and man of God. You have to learn to discern. And if you are a woman or a man of God, carry yourself, carry yourself with, with, you know, and, and, and be that woman and man of God and just, you know, and learn to, to discern what is trying to take you off of the course of, of, of being that woman and man of God, you know, yeah. represent the, the Lord in the way that we're supposed to you know, and, and you should know mm -hmm. if, if you have conviction, if there is conviction in your heart, then you're going to know that you shouldn't be doing that. It's that simple. If there's conviction in your heart, then you shouldn't have to think twice of doing it, about doing it. It's that simple. Yeah. Women, be modest in the way that we, that we represent ourselves. If you're going to be showing all this cleavage or anything, then you, then you should know. You should look at yourself and be like, you know what, is this modest or not modest? You know what? It's that simple. You know, we we are a temple. Our body is our temple. And that we're supposed to be able to know what we're supposed to be, you know, representing. We're yeah. representing Christ. You know, it's funny. Is, is, is I see this if, if I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling through. And it'll, it'll be um, a, a young lady. And supposedly the picture is about her son or daughter and how cute they are. But the camera happens to be up here. Hmm. You know, and I'm like, oh, look how cute he's eating a nugget, but you're showing. And I'm just like, really? That, uh, you're not trying to show your kid eating a nugget. <laughs> you know, like, come on, man. You're showing your nugget. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. You know what I mean? You, you. You're trying to show the crumbs, huh? That fall right there. You know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know. You know what I mean? And it's like, just stuff like that. You know. Come on. You know, nobody's that naive, yeah. you know, and it's like, but let's say, now let's say that somebody that just, maybe they did lose weight, maybe they do feel good about themselves, praise God, because there's, I think there's a lot of men and women that don't put selfies because they feel they're ugly, you know what I mean, and they're not, you know, yeah. so, so let's say the intentions are, are, are right in the heart, yeah. right, well, but the door is open for somebody to come along and all of a sudden they hit like, 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 like. All of a sudden you see 20 likes at 2.30 in the morning. Mm. Now you have a choice. You know exactly what's going on. Do you hide that from your spouse? Or do you say, hey, this dude or this girl, uh, yeah, last night, like 2.30 in the morning, hit like on all my stuff. And uh, everything that you were in, they didn't hit like. Just the stuff I was in by myself. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was funny. That <laughs> happened to her one time. Yeah, I, I, I think it was like two thirty in the morning. It was two thirty, like two thirty, when we were we were sitting here together, and 
and somebody I, I remember at two thirty and he messaged messaged me and he and he says hey. Somebody that knew me too though. Yeah, and just, you know, hey, what's going on or something like that and I was just like, Whoa. She immediately showed me. She was, look look at this. Look at this brother so and so. Yeah, and and I was just like yeah, and and my husband was like, Yep, he's fishing. And so you know what? Fishing. And I and I just told him, Hey, this is inappropriate. You shouldn't be messaging me. And I just kind of like cut it, you know, immediately. And mm -hmm. he just kind of felt really, really, really odd that he, I even told him that. And he just stopped, you know? And um, yeah, because here's the thing, right? Again, yeah, you get 20 likes, 2.30 in the morning. Your husband or your wife is they're asleep or they're whatever. And you, and you say you don't want to be rude. So you thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You just open that door. Yeah. You open that door. Why? Because we're enticed by our own desires. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah, and then there was another one, I think, that did the like the 20, the 20 or 30, yeah. remember? Over and over and oh, over. Oh, I forgot about that one. Oh, yeah. He got And then really actually said that you were rude. And then I, I told him, you know, that, that it was inappropriate or whatever. And he got really, really upset. And, he and got, blocked you. And blocked me, guys. <laughs> blocked me because I told him that, um, that it was inappropriate and everything. And he got upset at me. And he ended up blocking me. And I'm like, whatever. That you was know? funny. It, it, was, it was crazy. It was funny. Yeah. Guys, I, you see me laughing about it because I'm not a jealous person. You know why? Because... I love my wife. I know she loves me. I'm a good dude, man. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I know my wife's worth. I know my worth. You know what I mean? And it's like, I can joke and we laugh show, about we it. We show each other this stuff. I can stuff. joke and it's laugh funny. about it because I, 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 we, we, I, I want to believe that we're very open with each other about that stuff. You know what I mean? And there's times where... Um, there's times where a sister does message me and I can tell if it's a real honest to honest to God like question. It'll yeah. be something about a Bible or something. But guys, even that, yeah. even that, you know, I will answer once. But when when uh, another question or another, I said, oh, they're fishing for a conversation. Yeah. You know, so and that has happened. Guys. Yeah, that's that happened has too. happened. That's you happened know, and, and, you know, here's the thing as a pastor. um, I think as a pastor, you know, it is for him to... This guy's just standing in the shadows. He, he does have to answer as a... He has a responsibility as, a, as a pastor to answer. You know, it, it, it's very, very important. But, you know... You could um, tell, I could tell when it is trying to lead to a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And But I'm a lot of the times, you know, he'll bring me into the conversation... And he'll be like, you know, hey, listen, you know, can I call you with my wife, you know? Or I'll, and, or I'll just straight out direct it to you. Or direct it to me. And um, and a lot of the times, or we'll go ahead and call that person together. And when she says like, oh, it's okay, it's, uh, you know, you answered my question or something, it's because it was, the intentions were a lot different, mm -hmm. you know? But, you know, praise God, you know, I think a lot of the times we just got to, um, we just got to discern, guys. We we really, really do. We got to be uh, discerning in the things that we do. And, um, and, and that's what it is. But one thing that we do have to always do is take full responsibility for our own choices um, and, uh, and just discern. Yeah. So, guys, we didn't even crack half of James. Maybe we'll talk about James because there's other verses I yeah. wanted to hit. Maybe James part two tomorrow. But uh, thank you guys so much. God bless you. Have a great morning. Don't forget about Saturday, guys. And Yeah, don't forget about Saturday. That's uh, January 1st, 2022, uh, New Year's Day. We need your help. All right, guys. Bye. Bye, guys.